uh, education revolt that they've got with all the Protestants? Well, I uh, yesterday was told about it by uh, Bill Moyers, and then last night I uh, talked to Tony Celebrezzi. I contacted him about uh, 6 o'clock, and uh, he didn't think things were out of hand, but I told him that I'd heard it was pretty bad. I talked to him 10 o'clock. What we got to do is uh, get to the people that are causing it some way or the people that are listening to it. Yes. Now, uh, you got a liberal congressman from California. Uh, Foreman of California. Mm -hmm. C O R M A N. Yep. And you got Ms. Green, and oh, yeah. it's a pure church and state thing. Uh, well, she stirred this up. Well, she does always, but uh, she has shaken a good many of them, yep. and uh, you're gonna, we're going to get in trouble with our bill, with this amendment, with the former, and with other things. She is sitting in openly with the, the head of the Republican committee, uh, uh, this New York, Goodell. Yeah. They appointed him as kind of the propaganda artist, and they, he's not the policy man, but uh, what's the new committee they've set Goodell what? up on? That he's I've researching, researching, and the research. He's the head of the research group for the Republican I policy group. I and they've pawned him because they had nothing but reactionaries. So he has got her and Corman and Triple working with them, and they've got all of our Protestant group. But I'm not seeing, and I assume that you've been too busy to see them, and I don't believe any of our people are really working at them. I, Told Doug Cater to try to get with one or two today, but uh, uh, their principal basic argument is that a Catholic ought to have a pencil or a tablet, or mm -hmm. that maybe some priest might come in and talk to them. And uh, I don't know how we can avoid a Jew or a Catholic, anybody else coming in. And we got it under the public educational authorities, but I guess that even a Klansman can come in sometimes in this country and. But she's being mighty mean and vicious, and they say the reason is because Morris gave out an ill-advised statement that he was strong for the bill, yep. and she hates Morris. That's right. Uh, McCormick can't do much with her. Uh, Albert knows the Protestant groups and is a pretty leading Protestant. I don't know whether you have any connections with it or not, yep. but uh, uh, if you can, I would like for you to... Uh, spend some time with uh, with uh, whoever can talk to Corman mm -hmm. and uh, I can talk to him uh, well I would I, I would sure him. talk to him and just say that uh, this columnist uh, I, I don't know how I'd get to it but I'd say that the newspaper men are saying Goodell is getting some folks together and that uh, they kind of uh, Republicans are getting some of our people together trying to bust up a bill that was unanimously reported the whole basis of this administration uh, depends on it. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we are starting to work on our legislative program for next year. Uh, builds you a record to run on. But uh, I want to emphasize with you that the Security Council and Malcolm X's funerals and the uh, uh, Space Council and presiding and everything else is important. And we believe in that poverty and uh, civil rights, particularly your mayors. I've counted up uh, to give to some reporters been asking the assignments that you have. You have more than any man ever had except Garner, and more than Garner, but uh, the one that Garner had, the only vice president that I've ever looked at that had any influence was Garner. And I had none because Kennedy wouldn't give me any. He didn't just assign it to me. I want to make it clear here and now and once and for all, and even if it made a break between us where we split wide open, your number one responsibility in my administration comes even ahead of McCormick, Mansfield, anybody else. I expect you to be my liaison with both of them and to speak with authority with both of them and get the line down here what it is and then as you said in your speeches come back down here with the message because uh, i think that uh, the vice president is peculiarly equipped because a he has the legislative training he has the contacts he has the power to uh, make a speech for them he's on the ticket he's only one of two elected 
He's there with them. The president can't go see him. Hell, I'd love to. I don't even go to a dedication gymnasium, although I think I'm going to. But I want to go eat with Alan Elder. I want to go to Albert Thomas's. I want to go to the Texas delegation. That's where I want to be every day. I don't want to be sitting down here receiving the ambassador from Ghana and spending all day down here. But I can't do it. But the vice president can. Now, some presidents get jealous of the vice president participating in these acts. I think that education bill is 51% yours. I think that Appalachian bill next Tuesday is 49% yours. It's, it's Johnson Humphrey or Kennedy Johnson, and it's split half and half, just as much as you and Muriel own that home. And I want them to understand it, and I want you to understand it, and I want you to act accordingly because you just get your chart, get those 104 bells, and you just watch them like a hawk because if you're successful, even when we lose, of knowing that we were voting and why we were voting and who was wrong, uh, even if we lose them all, you will be a successful vice president because the only man that I ever knew that was was Garner. Garner could run the Senate. He had the power where they would follow him and do what he wanted to, and he could talk to Rayburn and run the House, and he did. And Roosevelt passed all of his stuff, and Roosevelt and Tommy Corcoran got the credit. You never have heard of old man Garner, but I stood here and watched it every damn day. And that's what I want you to do. Now, Kennedy felt if I did it, then I would uh, be, uh, uh, they'd say I was the master craftsman and that, uh, uh, so forth. So he told the Catholics and Mike and them to uh, pay no attention to me and to come down here. Now, they don't have to do that. You can negotiate with Mike. You can negotiate with uh, Russell Long. Uh, you can negotiate with uh, McCormick and Albert and Green and Morse and all the rest of them. And let them know that you are speaking to the president. And let them know that we work through the leaders. We're for them. But this is a dual operation. And uh, uh, put that up as the highest thing. Because what we're going to, we're not going to them on uh, how well... Uh, the Peace Corps did, or how well uh, even the poverty did, uh, or how well uh, 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 even uh, 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 the uh, meetings we have over here. What we're going to the folks with four years from now, that all you young men will be going with, did we pass Appalachia? What is our program? Have we got a farm bill? Have we got Appalachia? Have we got a school bill? Have we got a health bill? Is medical care out? What did they do? Here's what they promised. So we got to pass it. Now, that's number one. That's, right. that's your wife. Then you can get down to your aunts and your cousins and later. And the second thing you can do is uh, all this uh, uh, travel USA, and I want you to do all of it because I want to have it running out of your damned ears. But the first thing I want is legislating, and everybody is at your disposal on legislating. Now, they won't, they'll shove you off because they won't talk to the president direct. Yeah. And they all want him to call them direct. I haven't called a human up there this year. I'm not calling them on any bill. I never talked to one on Appalachia. I want you to be walking down the halls, though, and sitting in the gallery and being on the floor and talking to them and having the administrative assistants telling you what's happening and getting the gossip. And I don't want to, uh, you to have to talk to Celebrezzi because he really doesn't know what's going on. I talked to him 9 o'clock. Uh, this meeting was going on yesterday, That's right. and I uh, chucked up Carl Albert, but he was in Tennessee, and I chucked up McCormick, and he didn't know anything about it. And no one knew it's really going on, the goddamn damage is done, and the body is dead, and the, and the pulse has quit beating before we find out about it. So what we've got to do is just stay right on it. You've got to give that a little dash, you've got to watch these things. You got to, oh, Lady Green, Lady Bird just took her to Florida. I've taken her all over the country. I've had her down here. I bragged on her, but she is just a mean woman, and she's going to whip you. And if she does, why, then I'm going to put you in the uh, yeah, five-cent right. cigar business like Marshall. Yeah. Or Woodrow Wilson, that's what happened to him, you know, with his League of Nations. And, and we just can't. We, we're smarter than they are. We've got more energy. We can work faster. we got all the machinery of the government. Connor can call Republicans if you need to. Dillon can call Republicans if you need to. We got two of them. Somebody ought to honor Ogden Reed for going to bat. Somebody ought to get him a good speech. Somebody ought to honor that other guy from California, Republican, going to bat. Somebody got to brag on old pal now. And uh, but uh, if they beat that ag educational bill, well, we've had it. It's like the court bill of of, uh, 
of uh, Roosevelt's. Uh, it's the basic thing. And if we if we don't pass anything but education and medical care in Appalachia, we've had a record that congressmen can be reelected on. Well, Mr. President, I'll go right up there and be right on them all afternoon. Well, I'll I'll just, you, that. you just be on them the next four years. Well, you just say that you're the first vice president in the country that had responsibility for the the... I don't care if it's the Humphrey Johnson program. I want it to be ours jointly. And when we send a message up there, uh, I'll do whatever my cabinet will do. But from, from then on, it's yours until I get it back. Yes, sir. And these boys will help you, and they'll help you, and you just have to see who's pouting, have to tell us how to what we can do to correct it. You have to get to have to get to Russ to go see Bill Fulbright if he's pouting or whatever it is. But we just got to get this legislative program through, and I would say about uh, if you can get any kind of farm bill, the Peace Corps and Poverty and them, I think, will go. But if we got Appalachia now, if we get education now, if we get medical care now, then we got the running gears, and we can elect these boys. Yes, sir. But if we don't, they say his farm program was a flop. And in talking to groups, I wouldn't say we got 104 bills. I'd say, well, we're really shooting at. We've got a good program, and everybody puts more on their platform than they do. What we want to do is take care of this unemployment uh, where it's really distressed. That's Appalachia. We'll do it. The next thing we want to do is get these people who can't read and write. We want to educate them, make taxpayers out of them instead of tax eaters. That's education. We've solved that. The next thing's health. Now, that's basic. That, that's what I'm after, Humphrey. That's my program. Then the other hundred will be incidental. So if you don't get any but those three, now we're going to get them. I want up 500 million on this health extra. I said, don't ever argue with me. I'll go 100 million or a billion on health or education. I don't argue about that anymore, and I argue about a ladybird buying flour. you got to have flour and coffee in your house. And education and health, I'll spend the goddamn money. I may cut back some tanks, but not on health. So that's the, that's the go sign I gave them. And, uh, but education is about to be defeated and will be defeated by this old woman unless she meets some opposition. And Carl's in Tennessee. John's a Catholic. It can't do it. Doug Cater, I'm not sure, has, uh, has uh, really n known how to trade and work around. And some of these boys on the committee that are Protestants have got to know that this is what's going to reelect them. Yes, sir. And at every place you go, when you mention education, that's the most popular thing. And I just propagandize the hell out of it. And I tell my staff, I tell my friends, I tell my family that uh, you're not exactly emulating Garner. But the last time a great program was put on the books in this country, he put it on. Whatever else they say about him, he's 92. He damn sure passed the Stock Exchange and the Holding Company Act and the Agricultural Adjustment Act and the NRA and everything else. And he was standing there. And he split with him on the court. And he went back to Uvalde. But uh, uh, they've never let a vice president. Wallace didn't have one senator. He came to me for advice, and I said, the first thing I'd do is get acquainted with one senator. He said, well, he knew Claude Pepper pretty well. I said, well, Claude Pepper's with you on everything anyway. Now, you get Claude Pepper to introduce you to a bunch of these senators, and before you go out and make speeches, he was wanting to go all over the country and take the issue to the country. I said, you take the issue right there in the Senate. And, uh, but poor fellow, was, that was his problem. Then we came along, and Dick Nixon tried to make out like he had something. But Nolan cut his guts out, and Eisenhower cut his guts out, and didn't want Nixon to have any power. And although Nixon bragged about how he ran everything and so forth, if you look at these confidential records down here, they, they treated Nixon just like uh, uh, he wasn't here. And Eisenhower said he'd think a few weeks, and then he'd tell him what he did, if he had a few weeks to figure it out. So uh, Nixon, I came along, and they didn't want me to touch a legislative thing. Foreign aid asked me one time to switch Tom Dodd, which I did. And outside of that, that's all. Now, the sky's the limit to you, the 104 bills, and they're all yours and mine on the ticket, because that's what we ran on. That's our platform. That's our program. You is, you, you half of it, and uh, you're there every day, and you just uh, you just help us if you can. Uh, and when you get past, then 62, when you go out speaking, say we passed education, we passed Appalachia, we passed medical care, and if you give me those, I'll get to, I'll, I'll have a majority two years from now. Yes, sir.
Okay. Did you get my uh, report on some of the things? Yes, sir. I went over all of them, and I'm proud of them. But this is the stud duck, and I'll when we get that man. done, you can go talk about what you have done. But until we get it done, let's uh, let's uh, put everything else secondary. Yep. Now, I've been here since the first of the year. I, I want to go home. I'm just dying to go home. But I don't dare go home with this education bill like it is. I want to go this weekend. I just, uh, I'm just scared to death that that woman's going to beat me. I didn't want to beat me.